here. Mm -hmm. I just came out. Wow, this is so cool. Hello and welcome everyone. Hi My there. Hi. Do you Hi. want video? I'm just gonna take a minute to mute and then also just close the video for all of our guests. One second. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, we have a few more people coming in, so we need to just admit them. But welcome to a soft serve presents. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, everyone. Um, I love that so many of you have your video on. I can see you all. <laughs> it's what a delight. It's pretty cool. It is really cool. Like, I don't know if you guys get to see what we see right now, but there's like so many, almost a hundred. Yeah. Like so many little screens on, uh, on our window right now. And we can see, oh, I see children. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. This is so cool. Okay. We need to just unmute the window. Okay. All right. Can I leave that with you to yeah, yeah. let I'll people in? I'll okay, cool. Um, so. Well, hello everyone. Thank you again for joining us today. Um, my name is Annie Ngo. This is my co-founder, Rakshana Hassanali. Hi. We are two of the proud team members at SoftServe. Uh, SoftServe is a game-based learning platform for teaching and tracking soft skills like curiosity, empathy, and creative problem solving. Um, the idea is that through gamification, we can really encourage these human-centric skills. Um, and over the last three or four months during quarantine, we've um, had the pleasure of hosting a series of webinars called Soft Serve Presents. Today is a webinar number five, and we are so, so honored to not only have all of you joining us, uh, but as well, uh, our mentor, our advisor, and our friend, uh, Amanda J. Rosenberg. Amanda uh, is a senior UX researcher on the Google education team and product lead for Google Classroom. Um, beyond her current work with Google, she has quite a diverse and a very um, robust resume in education. Um, Amanda, please say hi, introduce yourself and share with us a little bit more about the incredible work that you've been, um, yeah, you've been doing. Thank you. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Amanda. I am, as Annie said, lead researcher on the Google education team for um, Google Classroom. Before I took on Google Classroom, I worked on Google Assignments, which is the new grader view within Classroom. And it's also um, an extension you can use within your learning management system. And so I had the great opportunity of being on that team from uh, idea conception of the product to what will be launched in the fall. So I'm super excited to see that in the world. Um, and I have also worked on Google's originality analysis tool, which is the new tool within Google Classroom as well as um, assignments that allows for teachers to help students understand how to properly write and cite um, the papers. But before Google, I worked at a startup called Tigley where we created physical manipulatives to really help young children interact with tablets in a tangible, tactile way. And before that, I worked in research marketing where I assisted a lot of companies from Kaboom to Crayola to DreamWorks, really helping them understand children of today. Um, and my background, um, I have a master's degree in developmental psychology from Columbia University. And I spent a lot of time in my doctoral work also at Columbia University Teachers College in instructional technology and media. And my foundation has always really been research and understanding um, the the why and the how of our users and really helping product developers understand 
how to make the best products for children today and students today in an environment that is really starting to revolve around technology. Thank you so much. We feel so honored to have you <laughs> be a part of our team. So like side note, everybody, Amanda is um, an advisor on our soft serve team. She's been really instrumental in shedding insight on just the importance of user experience for not only the student, but the educator uh, when building um, solutions for the classroom. Um, we are in really interesting times. Um, Rex and I are currently in Vancouver. Amanda, can you remind us again where you are? Well, I'm usually located in New York City, but we are in Maine for the summer after two weeks of quarantining. All right, I thought so. The weather behind you doesn't look like New York. <laughs> yeah. so. Not New York. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're in really sort of unprecedented times in all facets of life, but specifically around education. We thought it was really important to have this conversation today because of this transition to the virtual classroom. Um, in the field of work that we're in, uh, sorry, with our field of work being soft skill development, uh, I just knew that you'd be the perfect person to have this conversation with. <laughs> So let's just dive right into it if we can. Um, we have an hour with you today, 51 minutes as of now. Um, uh, Amanda has a date with her with a 10 year old, uh, canoe nice date. Son. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little later. So yeah, we want to make sure that this is as uh, collaborative um, and uh, engaging as engaging of a conversation as possible. I find that like webinars can 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 feel a bit dry sometimes. Um, so yeah, we wanna have the first part of this dedicated to questions that we've prepared ahead of time. Um, and then what we'd like to do is have everybody drop questions in the comment box. Um, Rex will feel through all of them and uh, pick a few that I think will, will really resonate with the rest of the group. Um, and then at the end, what we'd like to do is play a little game together, um, a game that we've developed on SoftServe to support uh, the learning of curiosity and empathy. So if you can all stick around, that would be so wonderful. Um, so yeah, let's start with the first question, which I think is like uh, the most insightful for all of us. Amanda, can you share with us why or how you define soft skills? Yeah, so I think it's funny. I, soft skills are definitely something that I feel like everybody has their idea of what they are. But really to me, soft skills are about how a person works. Mm -hmm. um, some call them people skills or social skills. I like to think of them as like work models of ways people navigate situations and spaces. Um, and those skills fall into the category of like interpersonal communication, um, collaboration, time management, empathy, dependability, problem solving, negotiation, work ethic, anything that makes you a better person to work with and can like connect with, I think uh, can fall into those soft skill categories. Right, I'm glad that you mentioned it's not just about work, but also about connecting. Things like at Absolutely. the end of the day, like where we really connect on, like us as a team, and then everybody who's um, supported us through this journey of building SoftServe is in understanding that um, these are critical human skills. And what right. makes human is this desire and also this capacity to connect. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why I like to think of them as ways we navigate um, people, situations, and spaces. It's not just about work, but it's how we engage with the world and the people around us, really. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, why do you think soft skills are important? And I mean, like, more so, why are they important to you? Yeah, I think they should be important to everyone, really. <laughs> um, the, the reason, you know, people work well together and there's good relationships and, you know, thinking about work or uh, groups in classrooms, the reason teams are successful is because of soft skills, right? Um, why a person feels like they are successful, especially today when jobs aren't really siloed or isolating anymore. There's a lot of collaboration. There's a lot of connection. Um, there's a lot of cross work between people. And without these skills, it's really, really, really difficult to flourish and move up in your career or in your personal growth if you're younger. And so 
understanding how these skills play into personal development, career development is um, really important in recognizing and harnessing the, the importance of making them better and stronger, like a stronger foundation of them. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of going to jump not in the order of the questions that we have. It's like, I'm, I'm very curious, like, um, how do you teach your, I'm sorry, it's like, this is totally derailing the conversation about like, a, <laughs> how do you teach your 10 year old, like soft skills? Or how do you talk about soft skills to your 10 year old? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for me, it's always been, and I talk, I wanted to talk about this later with some of the questions you had. Um, when it comes to children, when you watch children, they naturally have soft skills. When you look at a child and, you know, their play patterns, there's a point where they go from parallel playing, where that means that they're playing next to each other, but really not engaging, to when they actually are playing together. And when you sit and you observe a child's play patterns, it's all soft skills. It's communication, it's negotiation, it's collaboration. And so like when you as a parent step back and let them navigate the situation and build and build those skills, like that's really how I've helped my son develop is, you know, taking that urge of being a parent and wanting to fix like an issue or a situation or help them and letting them as children play together and figure out situations together and navigate and communicate. That's like the best thing you can do because then they really evolve in that development of their soft skills. Right. I love that. Oh yeah. my gosh. Cause like I, I you were, there's a bit of like a preaching to acquire moment because uh, <laughs> I have so much respect. We have so much respect for educators. Like in the short period of time that we had the opportunity to substitute or more so like come into a classroom and do workshops. Um, it was the most, intense overwhelming experience to try and support 30 I wasn't even 30 students it was like maybe 13 students <laughs> there was one day I actually like started crying because it was just so so difficult to and like I had so many expectations on how I wanted that day to go like managing all of it there was a lot going on but in any case so we just want to highlight that we have so much respect for educators however there's a point in the education experience where that disappears, that natural ability to have curiosity and empathy, to practice soft skills naturally. For whatever reason, that question why disappears from your vocabulary. And like, right. I'm so curious, like why, okay, yeah, for a lack of better words, like why that has to happen, why that exists. And so yeah. maybe the educators in our, in our webinar can touch on that. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad that you mentioned that, that if we just allowed, you know, students to just continue to have those questions with one another that, that allow them to evolve and engage in their own natural habitat, like that, that's one way to allow. Absolutely. Them. And I think like what is how, one of the reasons why it starts to disappear is that we ask for them to transition these soft skills into a learning environment, which isn't necessarily play, right? And so they're being put in a situation where the collaboration is gonna be different, negotiation is gonna be different. And those are things that um, are a little bit more difficult in a learning environment, trying to facilitate that for 30 children versus like, you know, at home when you have one child and a few others. Um, and so I find that like soft skills are there, they just need to really be, um, cultivated in a way like they, they it's like a plant you need to you need to tend to it you need to help it grow you need to you need to teach them the the next steps in the progression of really developing these soft skills and it's interesting you can see in a working environment which students did not have or which people as students did not have the opportunity to really harness these soft skills because they'll be in a meeting and they do not communicate in a way that is productive or they take feedback personally instead of constructively. And so these are just, you know, very, very simple examples of like how soft skills develop through a child's time and end up in the working world and, and how that not having that can actually have a negative impact. 
That, that's so interesting. And I know this wasn't a question we um, had kind of preset, but I was just going to this happens, by the way. We're the worst at sticking to a script. But, um, but like, do you see a difference at all? And if so, by how much between emotional intelligence and soft skills? Like, I assume there's a correlation, um, but I would just love to hear your thoughts on that. Because well, as you were talking about receiving feedback, I think traditionally in the workplace, people saw that as maybe... Um, a lack of emotional intelligence or maybe just being defensive. But the more we learn about soft skills and the more we see how they impact uh, you know, people in their workplace, the more I'm starting to think like, what is that relationship between them? I really think they can be intertwined. I think that um, they can, soft skills can be taught, right? Um, but you know, receiving feedback doesn't need to necessarily be an emotional skill. Like, when you can disconnect it from emotion, that's when you actually get so much growth from it because you don't feel attacked or pressured or upset that you did something wrong. You see it as, okay, this is something, an area I need to grow in. And so I'm going to take this feedback um, and, and work on it, which, you know, receiving feedback and taking it and like learning how to bring it into your life and grow from it when it's, you know, good feedback. Um, and that's another thing, another soft skill I think um, we really need to work on with our students is how to give good feedback, right? Um, so it goes both ways. But I think that they can be intertwined. I also think that they can be pulled apart and emotional intelligence, um, there's a range of it. And just because a student might not be as strong on the emotional intelligence scale doesn't necessarily mean they would be a bad collaborator. I and mean, I think there's just, you know, there's work that needs to be done in, in learning how to harness these skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And so to build on um, sort of, I guess like to, to, to build on that, like I'd like to touch on your uh, experience or your education. Um, there's a question out here about developmental psychology and mm -hmm. um, yeah, sort of like in the world of not just soft skills, but um, general learning. Like, uh, what is what does develop blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what does developmental psychology tell us about how children naturally learn? Uh, and yeah, clear. that's such a big question. I think people spend their lifetime, you know, researching and and answering that. But when it comes to children and and soft skills. Like I said earlier, you can see that in their play structures, right? Children are naturally curious creatures. That is what children are. They, they come into the world not knowing much and they, you know, interact with their environments and they ask questions, they touch. I mean, watching a baby put things in their mouth isn't because they're being difficult. It's because they're literally learning what, you know, things taste like, uh -huh. um, and I think it, it's interesting to, as a developmental psychologist, I find it fascinating watching children progress through that, you know, watching them have those aha moments to, you know, not having necessarily aha moments as much anymore, but really diving deeply into wanting to learn about things. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many children out there who like latch onto dinosaurs or cars or um, the planets because they just want to learn more and they become actual experts in it and, and know as much as some, you know, people who are getting their bachelor's degree because they've really spent the time and effort learning about these topics. I mean, my son's best friend is one of the smartest people when it comes to presidents. You can ask him any question and he can tell you everything about it. And it's because he had that desire to learn it even before he went into school. And I think that as children develop, it's really important to harness these things that they, they find really, really interesting and allow that to really propel them in their learning because um, what has you know, been seen in education is oftentimes by the time children, especially those who um, are struggling learners, hit like middle school or high school, they're totally burnt out and they've lost that passion to learn. And I think knowing how to learn something is one of the most important soft skills because that's something that will constantly move you forward in life is like that understanding of 
how you learn something and, and how you enjoy it when you learn it. That's just it. Um, so great segue into uh, an audience question. Uh, we have a Wendy Berg uh, who's asked us about um, how this pertains to middle school age children and up. Um, yeah. You mentioned enjoyment and that's sort of been our thesis. Like the solution that we've built is one designed for actually it started off with high school students and we found that the the, the easiest way to to keep them engaged or to have them interested in soft skills in any capacity was to add the the gamification components to it so yeah if you can maybe shed some insight on like your thoughts around that like how do we allowing it sounds like allowing toddlers and like younger children the ability to just be right so right. give them the environment so yeah. but what about yeah that? So I think for when it comes to the older grades, like middle school, high school, college, um, they need uh, facilitation in soft skills. Like I have seen in so much of my research that if you just throw children together and tell them to collaborate, collaboration doesn't, real collaboration doesn't happen unless you have one student who actually is going to be the catalyst for it you know, that one student who knows how to collaborate or that one student who doesn't want to get an F and is like, you're going to do this section and you're going to do this section. And then they kind of like piece it together. And even that isn't real collaboration. And I think for like middle school and high school, they really have to have that um, help from the person um, that is in charge and helping them really navigate the situation to, you know, what does it mean to come together as a group? What does it mean to collaborate on this assignment? Does collaboration actually mean that each one of you has to do the same amount of work? Right. Or, you know, is Annie actually better at designing the slides? And are you willing to put in the content and let her, you know, take the, the presentation forward? Um, is there some, like, it's really understanding allowing your students to understand each person's strength and weakness and allowing them to grow in their weakness and also harness their strength. And students don't do that naturally. They just want to get the work done. Right. So it's providing them an environment, a safe environment where they can collaborate, where they can talk. It's showing them what good feedback is, what constructive feedback is. It's showing them that because they got feedback, doesn't mean they've done something wrong. It's actually a great opportunity to get better. And I think a lot of that has been unfortunately stripped away from classrooms because of time constraints on certain topics and, you know, standards and all of these other things that have to happen. But what leads well to soft skills in a virtual environment is that you can bring them together in a very um, connected way if done right. And I think that is what's really interesting about now is that middle school and high schoolers are tech savvy for the most part, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they have the ability to hop on a Google Doc and collaborate together because really there is no other option at the moment if you want collaboration. So there is a a moment and a momentum now to really harness these soft skills and the environment that unfortunately we've been given at this point in time. Um, I think it's also understanding that not all activities are meant for, you know, harnessing soft skills, but if you really think about the activities you're giving your students, the assignments you're giving your students and thinking about how they can um, bring the soft skills into that and setting an expectation from the beginning. Like, guys, like maybe this is a math assignment, but what we're being graded on is your ability to communicate and help one another. Mm -hmm. Or find a problem here that you don't understand, and instead of Googling it, ask another student for help. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's getting creative and, and bringing them together to, to harness these skills. I absolutely love that you, that you pointed out that, like, the purpose of group work, project-based learning, collaboration, it's not so much the task you're working on, that's just kind of the content you need to, to build that 
you know, relationship and those skills so that when you're out in the real world or working on future projects that you know how to share responsibility, you understand, like, that's huge for me. It was a big challenge in my undergrad working with um, other students uh, and projects. I used to feel like it had to be equal. Mm -hmm. um, right. I thought that if it wasn't, that it wasn't like we weren't doing a good job. But my mindset took a minute, probably till I started working in the real world that I realized that we're all in this together. Success means that everyone is able to shine and do their best. And had I known that earlier, I think it would have been a lot easier um, just to build those relationships. So I, I love that you pointed that out. A hundred percent. I mean, when if, if the goal is to educate our children to be productive members of society and go into a work, working world and be good at their jobs, like we need to think about what that means. And in no job that I've been at, am I given the same amount of work as everyone else on my team mm -hmm. to complete equally? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what my job is, is to make sure that all of the research is right, the research is in there, whereas my designer's job is to make sure the presentation looks good when we present it to the vice president. Mm -hmm. I mean, an ugly presentation can be as bad as horrible content. And so, I mean, it's, it's really understanding that, like, you know, playing to the strengths of, of the students as well as allowing them to really grow in those weaknesses as well too, like really work on that and support one another. Right, I feel like we're all really on the same page and really enthusiastic about the importance and sort of the definitions around so soft skills. Um, I guess like we can, I guess now it's really just a matter of like, what are the tools that are available, uh, whether it's through Google or elsewhere um, that can really support educators? Because again, like back to our experience as like brief educators um, and working really closely with educators these last two years to develop soft serve, like, man, the job that you all have is, is so multifaceted. It's so dynamic. It's so important in a, in ways that I don't even think you guys know, you all know. Um, you are parents to some of these kids. You are educators, you are friends, you nurses. are nurses, <laughs> you are caretakers. There's just so many different roles that you play. And so, yeah, with the addition of like the world changing and that we don't foresee it changing back anytime soon. Not entirely. Yeah, yeah not entirely. That's a, that's a point, yeah. Um, I think like, it'll probably be a bit more of a, a high a hybrid world for mm -hmm. education, which I think. Yeah. So like what, yeah, how can we support educators in making the, this really abstract challenging task of developing soft skills, which we all know are so critical to a student's livelihood and success in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, you touched on that um, in terms of we're going into a hybrid learning environment and some schools might open up fully, but the way work is going to be done in school is going to be very different. You're not going to be able to bring five students together to sit at a table and collaborate anymore. Like that is not going to be our foreseeable future. Um, and so I think it's really harnessing tools that allow for that communication to happen. Like, you know, the Google app suite is, it was created for collaboration. I mean, you can go in Google docs, you can all work together. Um, what's great is there's a version history so the teacher can see who's doing what it's, um, you know, it's going to my, my favorite hack for Google Docs is going to help and then typing in what I need. So just type in version history and it pops up. Um, but it's the same thing with slides. And then when you start to think, I mean, if this pandemic would have happened 10 or 15 years ago, we would have been in a completely different world. Now we have so many options to communicate and connect with one another. Look at us today, right? Mm -hmm. um, so teaching your students how to use video chat together or video, video platforms and chat, right? And really um, not just handing over the tools to them, but saying, okay, this is the tool we're going to use. These are my expectations of how you're going to use it, but like, this is how you can properly collaborate. Like, you need to connect with one another um, through uh, a video platform, especially for like high school students who are often self-driven learners by this point and they're having to do their work on their own um, and allowing them to, to really connect um, with each other because the, 
the one thing that I'm seeing, one of the things I'm seeing in the research that I've been doing since COVID started, um, I've been looking at the impact on education globally and students, parents, teachers, admins, really trying to understand what is happening and what we can expect for the future is students are feeling isolated. Right. Right. And so how do we make sure that, you know, when we go into the fall semester, when things aren't thrown together quickly and that there is a plan that students don't feel that isolation. And that's where the soft skills really come into play, right? Mm -hmm. Is giving them a space to be able to connect, negotiate, collaborate, and work together and have a sense of community again. And that's what's really hard about a virtual environment is you kind of lose that sense of community. But by bringing in tools that allow for easy connection and communication and um, like, like the Google Suite and, you know, Meet, it, it, really, it really makes things a bit easier. So in a previous webinar, we had um, Shauna Jones, who recently did research, who also did research on um, collaborative work environments in universities. And one of the key takeaways was the importance of designating space to collaboration and time yep. to collaboration. I thought that was just so, like, it's so obvious, but also was so far-fetched. When I, we were in university like 10 years ago, I mean, yeah. how everybody, I mean, five years ago, I'm just kidding. Last week. Last week, uh, yeah, you know, years ago, um, we were expected to collaborate, but there was never class time to do it. You know, you always right. had to be back to school, but then, like, we also volunteered. We also yeah. had jobs, and, like, there was a lot of stuff going on that instead of collaborating after school, we would just, like, you know, email each other. Right. You do this, you do that, et cetera. It became about pr production. Um, so, I, I guess like what I'm hearing is if we can use these digital tools um, and dedicate that tool to collaboration, dedicate that time of using that tool to collaboration would be one of the most effective, or would be an effective way to harness. A hundred percent, yeah. And I think like, especially at Google, we took this transition to a new learning environment on our teams very ser seriously. We knew that our tools were gonna be used very differently than they were you know, the weeks prior. Mm -hmm. And so like Meet came out with new features, including hangouts and raising hands and all of that, trying to make sure that um, it meets the, the learning environment that we are now seeing. And like breakout rooms are really important because it provides a safe space and a space for students to get together and communicate. Obviously there needs to be some sort of facil facilitation because we all know when you get a group of like, 10, 11, 12 year olds together, um, sometimes they can go off task, but that's where setting expectations and making sure that they um, understand what those expectations are mm -hmm. and being on top of it really does help. Mm -hmm. I, everything you said is amazing. Um, everything, what we're really excited to show everyone today is what we've been working on, which totally supports all of the amazing tools that Google has to offer, um, allows, a lot of people, I've been getting a lot of questions here in the chat about how do you actually integrate that into the high school curriculum and uh, what we've been working on testing with teachers um, is daily practice has been showing us that it's a great way for you know students to get those soft skills, feel engaged, have that guided facilitated soft skill development mm -hmm. in a fun collaborative gamified way. So super excited to show you that um, in, in not too long. Uh, so uh, in case you're wondering why we haven't specifically addressed that just yet, uh, yeah. it's coming up. Um, uh, but please keep uh, sending your questions in the chat um, and we'll keep asking them. Um, yeah, I, so we have a few more questions that are like burning because, you know, we're super curious <laughs> and we only get like so much time with you, Amanda. Um, but yeah, so this is one that Rex put together. The idea that soft skills are the true hard skills isn't new. Um, I mean, there's been a, a very famous study by Google around like the most successful employees or I guess like the highest performing employees um, are said to have more soft skills than the hard skills. They are, we prioritize soft skills over hard skills, um, especially for career readiness. Like soft skills have been I mean, again, just reiterated over our conversation, like super important and critical. Um, but what do you think about this from one, your experience from edu an educational researcher um, and also your understanding of de 
oh my gosh, sorry, this is a long one. Um, you know what? I, I'd like to just say, like, what is your actual experience in in the working world at <laughs> Google? Um, is yeah. this reality? Oh, absolutely. It's 100% reality. Um, the the truth is Google does value soft skills. We uh, we value all skills, hard skills, soft skills. We, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say one is better than the other because the reality is you need both to be successful. Um, right. But um, it's, it's interesting when, when you're in a room and someone hasn't learned how to properly communicate, right? Mm -hmm. So when, for example, being at Google, there's a lot of ideas that come into a room. There's a lot of things we want to do. There's only a certain amount of resourcing. We can't do it all. So we sit down and we communicate. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot to be said about being able to disagree with someone without being disagreeable, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's a skill that is taught. Like when someone says your that idea is not going to work, like how do you negotiate? How do you maneuver? I mean, these are things that are done on a consistent basis. Collaboration. I mean, I keep on going back to collaboration. And the reason I do that is it's so important. I have not presented to um, a, a higher level lead without collaborating with an engineer with a product manager and with a designer. And those are all different voices with different opinions, right? And so that there comes a negotiation. What are the most important things we need to be putting in a presentation? Um, especially at Google, nothing is created in a silo. Like it isn't the effort of one person, it's the effort of many, many, many. And so um, I think, you know, those who really have harnessed soft skills are able to maneuver these situations a bit better. They're able to have those conversations, be able to um, have those disagreements and resolve them. I mean, we are also on a, uh, we do a PERF, which is a performance review every, um, or we do it twice a year, where our, we have to give our colleagues feedback, right? And we spend hours and hours and hours providing this feedback. So learning how to give constructive feedback is extremely important. I have grown the most from the best constructive feedback from peers because I know they're not coming from a place of anger or like, you're not good at this, but a place of like, I want you to be better in this area because I know you can be. Um, and knowing how to take that feedback and apply it and grow in it is a soft skill. But never in my you know, academic career was I taught how to give good feedback or taught how to take feedback and apply it to my skill set. One of the one of the studies I did when I first started at Google was to understand students' perceptions of feedback from their teachers and teachers' perceptions of feedback they give to their students. Mm -hmm. Because we were building um, a tool within Google Greater View and we needed to understand how feedback works. And one of the findings that I thought was fascinating is that teachers spend hours giving feedback, hours and hours giving feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and this was with college students, a study. And what students were telling us is that the feedback they were given didn't impact them because they couldn't apply it. Being told that they needed a comma in one place over and over and over again didn't improve anything that, you know, uh, in terms of like going forward. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk to students about like what types of feedback would actually help improve their personal growth, they wanted constructive feedback. Like, okay, you're really, your comma usage is subpar. So if you go to these sites and you think you, you read through or you watch this video, like those are the things that they felt would give them a better um, understanding of what they were struggling in. And it, with that information, we decided like what we needed to do was streamline feedback for teachers. So they spent less time giving the feedback that didn't feel impactful mm -hmm. and more time spending giving true impactful feedback that students could apply and then grow from. So that's just an example of, I, I think, how um, you know soft skills are really important, but sometimes they get missed just because of how much time we're spent um, really trying to to maneuver these uh situations right that's that's such a good example because 
it's all about application, right? Like the, the times when I think I learn the most is when I understand why doing X will in, like impact and help me amplify what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, if a teacher was like, hey, your ideas are great. I know you, but the way you're expressing them on paper doesn't show that. So here's how you can improve that. And here's what that will help you do. And I think that's the intention, but it, it isn't always communicated clearly to the student. And then when you get right. to the place, it feels kind of hostile when you hear it, mm -hmm. as opposed to what it's intended, which is, hey, I believe in you. These are some small things that we can work on. I mean, and the truth is too, educators, and I'm sure everyone on this call or this video can attest to, there's so much time that has to be put into providing feedback. Mm -hmm. And when you're spending hundreds of hours doing or providing feedback, it's really hard to give quality feedback, like real good, deep feedback, because at some point you're just trying to get through it, right? You're just trying to get to the grade. You're just trying to get it done, um, especially with college professors who have hundreds of students who write tons of papers. It's just getting through to the end. Oh, there's a really great question that just came up about this um, because I feel like a lot of the onus is put back <coughs> to computers and when we're thinking about like tools to support them, um, it's, 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 they should be supportive in, multi, in multifaceted ways, right? So like not only making it easier for functional reasons, but also allowing them to do some of the learning themselves or to develop during the use of those tools. And so um, Wendy wrote the question about, uh, so her question was, um, what are the tools? Yeah, what are the tools for teachers uh, that they can use to sort of self-check their skills or find new ways to communicate both written and oral? Um, mm. yeah, how, how do we, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I know that there is, you know, a lot of teachers out there that share feedback. Um, I don't know of a sh shared feedback tool. Maybe that's a gap in the market, um, but really being able to collaborate, which is a soft skill, right? Uh, teachers to collaborate with one another and talk about like what has really worked in terms of like where they see their students growing. Like, oh, I give this piece of feedback and the next paper, it's like perfect. Or, you know, I see my students grow because I've been able to construct it this way. And really working together with feedback. Mm -hmm. um, Google Assignments, which is the greater view within Classroom, has a comment bank. So once you get that feedback perfect, you can save it and you can reuse it, right? And then if you need to, you can tailor it to the student that you are um, commenting to. Mm -hmm. So that way, if you find feedback that works really well, you can, it's not like it's going to get lost. You can save it in and then you can retrieve it as you go through and you grade. It's also great for, you know, those mundane pieces of feedback that you just have to give like improper comma usage or um, that is not the right there. <laughs> you need to use the other there. Um, those kinds of things. Yeah, I, I want to add to that um, and sort of reference back to an, a previous webinar that we hosted as well. Um, I think the greatest way to support the development of these types of skills is to also practice them yourselves. Yes. So when a teacher yeah. is deciding to put together, um, yeah, put together a new curriculum, like if, if it, that curriculum is about um, collaboration, for example, of course, allowing the student the time and the space and the intention to learn collaboration um, and to practice collaboration, but also to collaborate themselves with either the students or other educators. Mm -hmm. That's like the greatest, like that's when education is compounded. Um, the effect yeah. of education is compounded and soft skills are like really possible. Um, and like, so I, we talk about this a lot as a team, like it, it would be so wrong as a company that is working on supporting the development of soft skills to not embody and practice them every day. So there's like an overload of curiosity in team meetings always. Mm -hmm. We probably like lose out on a lot of productivity for that. So <laughs> arguably like, you know, address things before they yeah. come up as a problem. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that's really great. I think I know just like from our experience with Google for Classrooms, like the, the, the productivity that we lack and the ability to like stay focused on a convert on a conversation <laughs> and not be overly curious um we make up for in very simple to use easy tools that like as you mentioned 
um, create an environment for uh, collaboration and discussion, communication to happen really seamlessly and easily, I think. Uh, so yeah, Wendy, if I can sort of support, uh, add to that, that would be yeah. helpful. And I think to add to that, I think when you spread more empathy, not just from the teacher or the educator's perspective, mm -hmm. but back onto the students, you're actually now encouraging them to ask, like, why is this important? So I think the onus, like, of course, shouldn't always fall on the educator. I think there's still right. that not only support that development for students to feel confident to ask why. Um, and I think that's a lot of what we've seen when we're testing uh, queue up one of the games on our platform is the game empowers students to ask why more often, mm -hmm. have that dialogue with the educator, and also allows the educator to get that insight and see what students are thinking and feeling about a topic that they can choose. Mm -hmm. And so what I've noticed in, in the feedback that I've received from the teachers that we've had the opportunity to connect with is that when you increase those soft skills across the board, it kind of allows for that stuff to naturally happen a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, and I, I think there is a lot to be said about allowing students to be um, responsible for each other, mm -hmm. right? Instead of just putting all the onus on the educator, allowing students to, you know, this is your group, you know, you need to work together, you need to hold each other responsible, you need to provide constructive feedback, you need to be um, verbal when you feel like feedback isn't fair, yeah. right? I mean, there's, there's all of that too. And, you know, it's a great opportunity, especially for the older students who are, you know, in like the higher middle school grades and the high school grades. It, it will only do everyone else a service later on as if once they're able to, to have these tough uh, conversations with people and, and you know, it, it carries over to their colleagues as well. I, as we're getting these questions in the comments and like as this uh, discussion is naturally or like organically evolving, um, I just cannot wait to show everybody what we've been building because it addresses so much of what we've touched on today, right? So the realities that, just like the shared understanding of the importance and the critical, like just how critical soft skills are to everyday life and student development in workplace, um, like visibility, but also like the challenges that are seen across the board with educators. Um, so the differences between like, I, I love how we sort of touched on allowing for freedom and flexibility in younger students and then facilitating, encouraging, and really being explicit about the, the importance of learning these skills um, and how we as an organization, not just as us as an organization, but like as a collective community of, of um, individuals trying to support educators, like how do we make it easier and take the onus away from educators? Um, but in doing so, like practicing these skills ourselves. So. Um, Amanda, do you think we can like take the last 10 minutes and show everybody what we've been building together? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so cool. So um, for everybody who's still on the line, uh, I just want to remind you all that at SoftServe, we are building a game-based learning platform for educators of all ages, uh, or for, for all ages, um, to teach and track soft skills. Um, through our platform, educators like yourselves now have the opportunity to uh, evaluate soft skills in a more uh, meaningful, way. meaningful way. Yeah. So the game that we built on the platform that now you have access to supports the development of two critical soft skills, the first being empathy and the second being curiosity. Um, so what we're going to do is just show you uh, how it works. So right from our website, we go to the dashboard. So here we're signing on as a coach. And so a coach is an educator who has the ability to host and create games. This is your dashboard where you'll actually be able to view how your students are doing, how many games you've played, what the stats and all that, all that is. Um, so this is my account here. Uh, to get going, we just click on start a game and you're automatically put into our queue up game, which is what Annie was just talking about. But the first thing you wanna do is click over here to select a statement. A statement can be anything. You can pull it right out of your classroom curriculum. We have some teachers who actually assign statements as homework from the previous lecture. 
you can be as creative as you like. Yeah. So whether you're teaching uh, forms of government uh, or uh, algebra, <laughs> algebra, yeah. I mean the the ability here to to be creative and curious yourself um, is in your hands. So we have a few pre-populated statements here, but by far the most popular option and really what inspired Q up um, is the ability to generate your own statements. And so this is a text box where you can go ahead and enter any statement that you want your students to empathize over. And so I uh, want to write the, anything in here. Um, yeah, do you have any so Amanda, do you have any ideas? Like <laughs> what's something that you think would make hmm. a statement? Uh, let's see here. Uh, I, I'm, I can't think of one now that I'm on the spot. <laughs> you know, a really popular one that um, is a nice way to start is uh, Justin Bieber is in jail. <laughs> you know, we're Canadian, so. And we always get asked, like, is he really in jail? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you just enter uh, the text that you want to use your game statement, and then you click next. Now, this is the part that we are the most excited about, because as we were doing our research and working with students from Canada, in Canada, in New York, in California, uh, what we realized is by al allowing the coach to have forbidden words in the game statement, we were further encouraging the empathy and keeping students in that flow. And so selecting a forbidden word is as simple as hovering over it. And what that does is it blocks the platform from allowing students to submit their response using those words. So what we're asking students to do is tell us who cares and why they care about the game statement. So in this case, who would care that Justin Bieber is in jail and why would they care? Yeah, so um, we might have played this version with you already, Amanda, but you know, for, <laughs> for, for the webinar's sake, can we go back to oh, uh, where did I go? Uh, the responses. So we're going to actually ask everybody who's... Um, oh, the responses, right. Yeah, everybody who's on the call sure. with us today. Yeah, okay. Everybody who's on the call today to, to help us answer these questions. So when presented with this statement, Justin Bieber is in jail, I'm sure most of you don't care that Justin Bieber is in jail, but if you could let me know, like who might care that Justin Bieber is in jail? Mm -hmm. You just drop it in our chat, that would be so wonderful. Yeah. And the best thing is, is sometimes you won't care at all about the game statement, but the way the game is set up is you get really competitive and you really want to engage in the, in the topic. And so it's a great way for students to get really excited about Maybe something that otherwise wouldn't be. Okay, so Debbie says that people who've been to jail in the past or are concerned about jail, okay. I mean, young children. Oh, his wife, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Haley would absolutely be concerned about, I would hope anyways that Haley would be concerned about her husband being in jail. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Bieber, his, his mother. We have French Canadians that are not pop music fans. Okay. <laughs> his fans. <laughs> the Believers. His manager. Kevin, you know what's up. His agent. Yeah, his agent, other teams. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, the press, the media. Um, we also got one um, not too long ago. Who's like the, the person who's like his jail cellmate? Oh, yeah. yeah. Prison guard. <laughs> the prison guard. Oh, his for pet. sure, his pet. Yeah. I'm sure he has like a, a great team. That could, police might be sad because he won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So oh, the idea here is for the most part, you know, like we may not care about this specific subject or this specific statement. Um, however, you all in this moment of uh, simply being presented with the questions, who cares and why, um, are exhibiting da, 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 empathy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then the second part of this game would be then to say why they care. So we just kind of went through a, a laundry list of the various different people, things, institutions that would be affected by Justin Bieber being in jail, and then we can pick one and say why. So we could say, you know, his wife is upset because she's not going to be around to give him company anymore. Uh, we could talk about... Yeah, I mean, like the <laughs> press and the media are thrilled because they have something new to write about. Like TMZ is going to sell out and, or like you know, <laughs> ads for the next week, or whatever it might be. So there's like this very diverse array of different answers um, that can come to light. Uh, and allow for students to really express their empathy and their curiosity. In the work world, Amanda, I'm sure you can attest, like this is something called stakeholder mapping. Like, 100%. Yes, mm -hmm. identify like if there's a problem in the world and um, does that problem actually matter to anybody else, anybody important, uh, anybody that's willing to pay. <laughs> yeah, and I think one of the great things about this program is that 
especially in a virtual environment now, you're not able to have these conversations as you know easily in a digital world as you would in the classroom. With everything that's happening globally, these are things that need to be touched on, right, with your students. And you would have talked about them in a day-to-day -day situation. So being able to put in the statement, like Justin Bieber in jail, or you know um, anything that's happening globally right now with the pandemic, Mm -hmm. um, really allows for your students to not just connect with one another, but to connect with those beyond your classroom and really understand why the certain people might care when they might not be in the same situation. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. So, I mean, without sounding like a Simon Sinek, um, like video <laughs> loop, it is really just fundamentally about why, like we were so, we were trying to figure out a way to, to, to encourage the expression of empathy. And in, in, so when I was mentioning, we did those workshops in, in uh, Palmdale, California last year, I was like, okay guys, let's express empathy. <laughs> and then realized it was just a matter of asking the questions, who cares about this and why do they care? And in that moment, a student, when shown, whether it's Justin Bieber is in jail or the ozone layer is depleting or the presidential election is next month, like they can now express why they think um, it might matter and who it might matter to. Um, so in the game environment that we've created, uh, what you haven't been able to see yet, I, I mean, Amanda, you have, but everybody else who's on the line hasn't been able to see yet, is um, every student is shown the same game, uh, game statement. And then they have the opportunity to vote privately on which response they think is the most empathetic and the most curious. Um, after a number of um, rounds of voting, we start to identify the best performing responses. Um, and then as selected by the students. As selected so by the students. In, so it's really great because they're now invested in being part of that conversation. And mm -hmm. what was like magic to our ears when we were running this in person on post-its in Palmdale was you hear our students say, no, my answer is more empathetic and here's why. And, my, and the teacher was like, I have been trying to get my students to mm -hmm. have a discussion about you know, empathy for so long. And if they weren't invested in the way they needed to really be genuine and honest and transparent with mm -hmm. what they believed. And it's just, it's just such a great thing to see um, you know, students really hear, like, listening to themselves and believing in their, in their opinions. Right. So you, and, you know, truth, the truth is too, empathy is a really hard, soft skill to harness. Right. Really, it is really difficult. And I'm sure all the teachers on here can attest to it in one way or another, how it's hard to get a student to understand what someone else is going through or what that experience is like. And being able to infuse something like this in a game way, in a gamified way, allows for them to kind of like take a step back and not really think of it as empathy when they start. But by the end of it, they're, can, they can really connect with what that problem statement is and, and why somebody, it might not be them, but somebody will care about it. Like, I didn't think I cared much about Justin Bieber being in jail <laughs> until I played this game. And I was like, his poor mother. I, I understand now. Like, next time he's in jail or like something yeah. happens, I'm going to step back and be like, you know, I feel for Justin Bieber and his people. Yeah. And like, that's what, and that's what the goal is, right? And empathy is one of those really hard, soft skills to, mm -hmm. to harness and teach. Um, and so kudos to you guys. I think this, great, this game is great. And I think it can be used in all different types of levels. And it's a great way to have these conversations virtually and really just have students connect with one another and empathize together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, really, it's just about, again, like a, a solution like this, we hope is taking the onus away from educators. Like the beauty of it is that there isn't a right answer. And in the world of abstract concepts um, and contextual concepts like empathy and curiosity and creativity, like I think we are doing, I think I'm proud to say like this is, this is probably the, the best reflection of recreating that experience. Um, and taking the, the, the pressure off of teachers. Um, I, I would really encourage educators to play this too with their students yeah. um, and see like just how empathetic they are. Um, and how, or with each other. Or with each other. Very oh, that's, common. Exactly. Yeah.
Exactly. So like as a professional development tool, like soft serve has been very popular um, with, with educators. So yeah, and to address some of the comments, uh, questions in the comments section. So we'll be sending you an email um, up to learn more about soft serve and how you can get access. Um, everyone on this call will be extending uh, complimentary access, of course. Um, and I'd love to show you more about the platform. I, we didn't have that much time to go through it fully here, but uh, we really wanted to make sure we talked about this, you know, um, the future of education and how soft skills impact it. And hopefully um, our tool is something that can support your classroom and make learning a little bit more um, fun and easy <laughs> for you. <laughs> Amanda, thank you so yeah. much. We are beyond grateful for your time, for your no. yeah, commitment to like this, this space of education. And I think like um, I can speak for everybody here, like your experience has been nothing but um, like, Enlightening. Enlightening for us, <laughs> yeah. Thank no, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And to, all, to everyone who logged in today that is teaching a class in the fall or classes in the fall or ha who taught classes this past semester, thank you so much. Awesome. Um, I, I can't give enough gratitude to the amazing things you guys have done and the transition you had to go through and the future you're looking at. You know, as someone whose goal is to support you guys, um, I can tell you right now I'm doing the best I can. Oh, we know it. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, stay tuned via email. We will send you over a demo request like if you'd like to spend more time with us. We do <laughs> want to spend more time with, with you. you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll let everybody log off and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank and, you. And your weekend. Weekend. Yeah. I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Linda. Bye.